Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about the SCT rotations of spinners and polyvectors. So here I've written the polyspin matrices over here. And you probably rec recognize these from quantum mechanics. And today we will be talking about building mat matrices from these polyspin um, matrices. So a vector has components x, y, z, right? You know this from high school. And we can build a, a matrix a representation from this vector. There are a couple ways of going about this. But one way to build a matrix like represent, representation of a vector, big V, is by taking a super position, position of these poly spin matrices which looks like this. Okay. And here we have the poly spin matrices. Then here we have um, these vector components. So if you have one vector and we want to say, like build a matrix like, comp like a matrix like brother, or a corresponding matrix of that vector, one way to do this is by taking a superposition of um, the, the poly spin matrices, okay? And by doing this, we get that the matrix version of, a ve of the vector will be this over here. You can do this yourself by just expanding it out, but that's what you get. So a brief rundown of what we just did. So we have some vector, and we want to make some matrix version of the vector. To get this matrix version, we just take a superposition of the poly spin matrices with the vector components. Simple enough. Now, well, how do we rotate a vector? Well, oh, one more thing. Why are we doing this? Why are we... Um, doing it in this way to build a new matrix? Well, because it turns out that the determinants of the vector matrix, that's what I'm, I'm gonna call it, equals the length of the vector squared. So the length of like the small vector squared gives you the determinant of um, the matrix vector and vice versa. That's why we're ex expanding it in this particular way. Okay, so how do we rotate a vector? Well, we rotate vectors by applying a rotation matrix to them. So let's say we wanna rotate some vector V, we apply a rotation matrix to the vector and that outputs some new vector W, where W is just V rotated by some particular amount. Now, usually in linear algebra, we have linear maps to take that taken vectors and output new vectors. And most of the time, these least linear maps scale the vector and rotate them by some amount. If the linear map purely scales the vector, then we call that vector an eigenvector. But in this case, for our, for our purposes, we're only dealing with matrices that rotate the vector by some amount and that, and that does not scale it by any factor. So you rotate vectors by just applying a one rotation matrix to the vector. Now, how can you rotate a vector matrix? How does that work? Well, we, we use, you guessed it, rotation matrices again, but except this time to rotate a vector matrix, you have to um, multiply it by a rotation vector twice. Where here is a rotation sorry. So where here is a rotation matrix, and here is the transpose of a rotation matrix. So to rotate a vector matrix, you'd have to uh, apply it twice by a rotation matrix. And here I've written them explicitly. You, know, you might be wondering, how do I know this? How how do how do we derive this? Well, I'm not sure about that either. Uh, you can just look up a, a derivation of it online. But as of right now, take this as like an axiom or whatever. But here are the rotation matrices 
for a vector matrix. Now there are some pretty cool properties of these rotation of, of these rotation um, matrices. Um, because the determinant of the rotation matrix is going to be one. Here is the proof for it. The determinant of the of the matrix is just e to the minus i uh, theta over two, e to the i theta over two, which equals oh minus zero, which equals um, one. So the determinant of the rotation matrix is going to be one unity. Same thing with this um, uh, transpose matrix. It also turns out that taking the uh, transpose, sorry, taking the complex conjugate of the transpose of the rotation matrix will actually give you the inverse of the rotation of the rotation matrix. And you can actually um, prove this yourself. Proof is trivial. So we have two interesting properties of these rotation matrices. One, um, the, the determinant of the rotation matrix is one into um, the complex conjugate of the transpose of the rotation matrix is just the inverse of the rotation matrix. So we say, as a shorthand, the rotation matrix is a member of the SU2 special unitary group. Well, what does that mean? Well, the special unitary group is defined as the, the group of matrices that obey these two properties, that that, that obey uh, that the determinant of the matrix is 1, and that the complex conjugate of the transpose of the, of the matrix is the inverse of the matrix. So we just use SU2 as a shorthand for that. And it's called the special unitary group. And these rotation, rotation matrices are called these SU2 rotations. Okay. So to rotate a vector matrix, you just uh, apply the rotation, the rotation matrix twice. Now you know from the test of calculus that we can take a vector, a, a sorry, you, you can take a matrix and write it as the uh, tensor product of a vector a b and a covector c d. So our vector matrix is this over here. They're sometimes called poly vectors as well. Um, So we can write this as the tensor product from of A, B, and C, D. That's just that's just from tensor calculus. If you don't know that, you can watch my tensor product uh, plus covector video on my YouTube channel. So we take the tensor product of A, B, and C, D to get to get this. Okay, cool. Now it turns out that if our vector is a null vector, which means that the length of the vector squared equals one, then vectors A, B, and covector C, D are spinners. What do I mean by this? Well, first of all, a null vector is defined as a vector where, sorry, the absolute magnitude is zero, not one. And you, you may be wondering, well, that's only for the zero vector, right? Well, not quite, because if our vector has complex components, it can be a null vector. Here's an example. If you have a vector um, with components i and one, then the uh, value squared will be i squared plus one, which is just minus one plus one, or zero. That's a null vector. Now, if our vector is a null vector, and then we take um, the vector, the, well, then we take the matrix or representation of the vector. We can, of course, write that as, as, as a tensor product between a vector A, B, and a covector C, D. But that tensor product is going, the members of the, of the tensor product will be spinners. So 
so they will be spinners. So AB, instead of AB, it, we're going to have Psi1 and Psi2. And for, instead of CD, we're, we're going to have minus Psi2, Psi1. And this is why people say that um, spinners are like the square root of vectors. Because like if you have a number 9, 9 equals 3 times 3, right? So 3 is the square, is the square root of 9. Well, a uh, null vector matrix is the product of two spinners. So we say that spinners are like the square root of the null vector matrix or representation. So now let's rotate um, the vector matrix by using spinners. Oh, so we just the normal procedure. So that's just R times Z X minus Y I X plus Y I and minus Z times R transpose. But remember, we can break this into a product, a tensor product of R two spinners. So instead we have that the R matrix acts on spinner psi one and psi two. That's a product of minus psi two psi one acting on the R rotation matrix transposed. Now we can define psi one as psi, psi one and psi two vector. We can, we can define that as um, this symbol, and then we can define minus psi two psi one as the gamma symbol. So instead we have our uh, curly X uh, tensor product of gamma R transpose. Okay, so what have we just done here? Well, it well we, we just found out that by writing the matrix as a product of spinners, we find that we're rotating a vector matrix is just rotating the individual spinners. So spinners only re require one SU2 or rotation to properly rotate, but a poly vectors or vector matrices require two uh, SU2 rotations since they are made up of two spinners and they each rotate one. So we have two SU2 rotations. So key takeaways, um, spinners rotate with an SU2 rotation, but um, vector matrices rotate with two SU2 rotations. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We just covered the rotations of uh, matrices and spinners. Um, yeah, to rotate a vector once, we need two spinner rotations. Okay, now there is another app application of this in space time. Of course, we know that space time for general relativity is a Fourier Bishop pseudo Ramani manifold. If you don't know what that means, you can watch my um, Einstein field equations video. And that was like the second video I made on my, I made on my channel. So space time is a four-dimensional Cedar Ramanian manifold, which means that um, it has well four dimensions. Um, Ramanian means that um, uh, what does Ramanian mean again? Yeah, Ramanian means that the metric tensor is um. Oh yeah, Ramanian means that there is a metric on our space. It means that there is a notion of, di of, of distance between two points. Now, which in other words, it means that there is a there is a metric tensor equipped to the space. The pseudo Ramanian means that our metric tensor is um, non degenerate, or like degenerate. Either one of those two. And and manifold just means that um, locally, the space is Euclidean slash flat. Now, space time is four-dimensional. And we can actually describe space time using um, spinners.
kind of. So, space-time, um, what, what, what am I going to say? Yeah, so space-time, we have vectors on space-time. They're called four vectors. Um, so here's like um, CT, here's X, like any vector on space-time, they're called four vectors. And just like before, we can, re we can represent um, these space-time vectors as matrices by expanding them with the poly spin matrices. So you have like CT um, times um, T plus XX plus YY plus ZZ. And that looks like this over here. I'll just copy that and paste. Yeah, it looks like this. So you have instead, I think CT minus X, I believe, then CT minus C occurs here. And just like before, we could actually factor this to a product of two spinners, but I think they might be four dimensional, maybe. I'm not quite sure. But, and then we can rotate these like before, but instead, ins our, our rotations aren't SC2 anymore. Our rotation matrices become um, SL02 um, or 03. Yeah, I think it's zero three SL zero three. They become elements of the um a special linear gr rotation group. So yeah, I'm just showing how um this whole concept of plus in space time you can represent four vectors as poly um as um poly vectors and they can be described as the product of spinners. And they are an element of the special linear rotation group sl03 so yeah that's a rundown of um poly of sct rotations of spinners and um poly vectors sorry for the noise my house was really noisy but